Welcome back, Redeemers. Stays, thank you for joining us again. My name is Curtis. I'm Nick. And today we got a special title track that we haven't checked out from Stray Kids called Levanter. You have not heard this before or anything? Nope, not at all. I've been I've been chilling. I've been, yeah. you know, I've been trying to show the Stays some love yeah. because, you know, they, they around. But I've been really trying to hold it down and not look at too much because I'm waiting for you to get back. And I, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> and sorry for... You know my absence if it held up any content for y'all but we're gonna hopefully you know try to get into much more Should now back, and very very now. shortly so let's jump into this jump hey into man y'all better be subscribed too man caught you like y'all be watching content but y'all don't be staying <laughs> jump on the patreon too we just got an exclusive choreo battle up on there too and i think kurt you wanted us again to the dance practice for this as well something else Okay, okay, we'll, then we'll, we'll do some more stuff. Yeah. So I'm on a Patreon. So I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving us scars. Got here. It's like, nah, I don't really used to piss people off. <laughs> it's young, it's young straight. It's, it's like beginning of 2020, end of 2019. <laughs> Yeah, they like babies. Let me bring this, this back a, new a little one. bit. It's a new one for Nick. Yeah, you know now we can now we can pause sometimes. And everything's kind of you know all right here now. But that falsetto kind of caught me off guard a little bit. I said know? I had a feeling it was uh, yeah. gonna take over for you. Okay, let's. He wasn't ready. Step into that rock pocket. <laughs>
worlds colliding. Step out, Klee. Yep. Klee albums. Klee meaning key. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man. First off, make sure y'all subscribe. Jump on the Patreon for more content like this. Um, Choreo Battle is up. Um, S Class versus Megaverse or Megaverse versus S Class, however you want to word it. Um, so many thoughts about this. Um, I, you know, obviously, you know, I have a lot of members that like I love. I, I really love all the members and shit. But you know, I, I, I just need to highlight that I always love how they use Felix voice. Absolutely. I feel like they always know just when like to drop it, and it could be just you know all the producers and the writers in the group and shit, and really just them collaborating just to know when to like drop him because his voice is almost like an atomic bomb to me maybe that's a bad reference <laughs> um but his voice is like a weapon of mass destruction and i feel like they know when to it, just has, it has such a great punch to it that like the way they infuse it is always so like it, it always uses um it's always maximized to the best of its ability yeah because they'll always do something like kill the beat and drop him in there or someone to get like to the lowest that they can in the vocal like you know metric and then yeah. like you'll just kind of drop it and it's just the ebb and flow works so well with what they do. For sure. And um, that, is, that is definitely a conscious effort between them. Like, even even Chan has said before that, like, you know, knowing how distinct his voice is, like, it's always, like, a conscious effort of, like, you know, like, it brings something so unique to the group that they're always, like, kind of mindful of, you know, the ways in which they plan to use it or kind of try to infuse him. So you always feel, like, his presence for sure. So, you know, I, I always try my best to keep, like, the reactions, like, positive and everything like that. Mm. Um, you know, I think y'all know I've had issues when I've seen people like kind of like diss straight kids or, you know, when we were around certain people, just kind of the energy that was given towards them. Um, you know, I don't like the whole pots and pans music and everything. And I think really just even taking a look at, you know, pre-debut stuff, the earlier content stuff that you kind of put me on and even stuff like this, because um, this would have been well like a year before Backdoor and everything came out. So, um, the backdoor is 2020. Is this yeah. 2019? This is probably this is probably like December of 2019 or very, very beginning of 2020. Okay, yeah, so that would have been you know before before backdoor era and everything. I'm saying that to say, like, they they do music so well. Um, and any person with a heartbeat that just would listen to anything from them would be able to know that they attack every genre of music and do it at an elite level. Um, the, mus the musicality on here just feels different. And shout out to JYP. And I know you know this a little bit more, and I'm not trying to run on like too many tangents. Um, it seems like JYP always gives them the flexibility to do what they want on tracks mm -hmm. and allows them to be as creative as they want to mm -hmm. and for them to kind of do what they want. Yeah, a huge, a huge part of that is because when they were actually like, you know, making the group and everything like that you know chan had the ability to kind of select the members that he wanted you know within jyp's uh you know training um trainees i should say um and it was something that jyp had stayed away from and and you know chan had a long journey of you know kind of i don't want to necessarily say failing many times but you know what i mean like when everyone around him was kind of you know being elevated or whatever or being like he just kind of constantly remained um, so there Do you was know like many years he was a trainee? I, I could be wrong. I believe it was like six years of like constantly like getting those before like that seventh year. If I'm not mistaken, I'm a little fuzzy on uh, you know some of that information. So please correct me in the comments. Um, but basically to say that you know JYP when he kind of gave Chan that that moment to you know basically pick the trainees he wanted, he stepped away basically from it, let him do it, and then basically said, "Come to me when you're ready." Um, and I won't get too much into like the show or anything like that of kind of like you know the the discovery show if you will I suppose or the, the survival show I should say excuse me because when they did um, they link up with yeah. um, Treasure and yeah. I was able to kind of watch from Treasure's their segments and yeah. from the Treasure perspective side yeah. of things YG the owner of YG and shit like that he is very much hands on oh absolutely um, um, so and I know a lot of a lot of CEOs and producers mm -hmm. might kind of be hands on yeah well he. It, it was a big thing with JYP um, as far as, at least to, to my recollection, was basically he didn't want everything to feel too industry, too maintained, too kind of, you know, he w really wanted to kind of experiment with the artist, but um, that, it was, how the, he first, it was the first time, though, that it wasn't, you know, through him. So basically, 
when they were able to, let's just say, make it on their own and debut on their own and everything like that, um, and not getting into the specifics about that, of course, but basically to say that when they did actually debut, he took a step back and basically is like, I want y'all to kind of like be you, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, make your own music, your own choreo, all that stuff, write your own lyrics. And it's, it's been something that's been such a strong identity of the group, even from so early on. Uh, you know, we talked about tracks like Elevator, like way, way back, of course. Um, so there's, there's so much kind of, you know, to be infused with that stuff that I find really amazing personally, but it, it's something that holds so true to like their journey. So kind of even seeing like tracks like this, um, it, it definitely hits a special place for me. So it's like, and I, and I know that, you know, people are obviously going to have, you know, varying opinions or kind of, you know, say comments here and there and stuff like that. But, you know, like hearing their music in its basic entirety and everything like that, it's, it's a, it's such a misconceived kind of, you know, statement that's like really just, I, I would honestly go so far as to say it's like a straight up lie. Yeah. Personally, but it's like asinine a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like but, but you don't want that kind of feeling or thought projected into like someone else's mind that like doesn't know them mm-hmm. and you know stuff like that but this is one of those songs that i feel like really showcases like so much of their ability certainly vocals even from so early on and, and honestly you know just knowing how much of this you know really did have to be kind of on you know like let's just say han sung min um and even chan to an extent um as far as like they you know they had to kind of take on like those those roles vocally and it's just like we know that straight kids can rap really well especially mm-hmm. like district nine like coming out the gate mm-hmm. again elevator like stuff like that but tracks like this are just really you know and this was the title track you know for the clee album and and i did say that clee is french for key mm-hmm. as far as like you know the key to it like all the things about being you know stray or that journey of youth and self-discovery and stuff like that the key to kind of unlock like you know those aspects of your true self we talked about that with uh like um, Chronosaurus and, and things like that mm-hmm. um, as well but but yeah um, as far as this song itself like anything else that you kind of like feel um not just I had to check too just because I was like I know they debuted in 2018 I wanted to see like when and it was in March so you know like yeah. you said if you telling me this is yeah if this is the tail end of you know the next year mm-hmm. you know and like I said Elevator that that's probably my favorite pre-debut song ever from a group yeah um, so it's just seeing what they do rap wise and then seeing them kind of do songs like this is just like, you know, it almost pisses you off. Cause like you said, I'm not trying to bring this like negativity into this, yeah. but just, you know, looking at stuff like this and it's just like the choreography is so just like subtle yet still strong, great formations. Um, even the video, um, like, you know, they, they wasted no money every single time. I watched all the earlier work yeah. and it just seems like, you know, JYP definitely did a very great job of making sure that they were be able to do whatever they wanted in their creative freedom. Um, and with that, you know, uh, whether it was Chan or, and, you know, the rest of the guys, they were innovative. Yeah. I feel like if the industry was going left, they would go right. Exactly. Um, and just be making things that kind of made them stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always bring this up. I don't, you may not have been here. I was talking <laughs> to the Redeemers. When I first got back into K-pop and Backdoor was on, I didn't know nothing about K-pop. Yeah. But all I knew was I was like, yo, <laughs> whatever this is, they seem different. Like, this just feels a little different than whatever even is going on yeah. in their own genre. And I think that holds pretty much true to kind of, like, everything. Um, yeah. So I've been having fun with you showing me just kind of, like, you know, things from, like, you know, insomnia yeah. to, uh, like, you know, even some of the newer content that we got to get into. And there's still so much we got to get into. Um, but with this in particular, this was dope. I enjoyed it. I'm not quite sure if it's a download for me because it's more of, like, a vibe than anything else. Yeah. But this has me interested to see what else was on the uh, I- album for this. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of great early work, too, that I think it's, you know, especially with, like, their kind of rise to fame and everything, certainly post uh, God's Menu, to say the least, or, you know, um, even, like, Thunderous and stuff. But, you know, basically just those kind of tracks and kind of what their career trajectory has been after that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, certainly the albums like Maniac and then obviously, like, you know, being on Kingdom and things of that nature as well. Like, just, but when you kind of see, like, tracks like this, it just feels, you know what I mean? Um, like it, there's definitely a nostalgia to it, both for me, even just being up here again, kind of listening to the Stray Kids um, and being able to react with you, of course. But, you know, even for like the journey of the group that I've com- kind of come to know, like there's so much to kind of be gained by looking back on these moments. Um, and one of the things I, I did want to point out, at least, uh, is uh, like their pen is, is always like so incredible. 
um, and just to kind of emphasize a little bit, it's like, you know, when, when Chang Bin, um, I believe, has his verse uh, towards the, like, after the first hook, I believe, in the middle, he basically says, like, he uses kind of like this this moment right of like reference in the Four Seasons. Yeah, it's basically. Okay. But uh, he uses this moment kind of basically talking about like the Four Seasons, sort of, uh, because the word Levanter is actually a reference to like this, this great wind, um, kind of like this propelling wind. Um, and I forget um, exactly the reference. I know there's like a deeper context to it, of course, but basically um, it's this wind that's going to like push you past everything and kind of like heal you in, in a sense, or at least they use it metaphorically in a sense like that, if I'm not mistaken. I know there's more context to it that um, y'all can feel free to kind of um, correlate to what I'm saying down below. He had, he had the elements yeah. in his verse because I believe he talked – he mentioned the snow. He mentioned the fall, the leaves in the fall, and exactly. he mentioned he mentioned all, all the. It, it, he made this like really things. kind of full circle moment where it's like basically the wind of like needing to change, kind of seeming like it's blowing the leaves off of the tree, mm-hmm. and then when it falls, even that there there's that pain of like that separation or that loss of like things not being the way that you wanted them to be, perhaps. So you get trampled in like the snow, but in so doing, right like yeah, like the leaves. Like the fallen leaves under the tree, even if I eventually get stomped yeah. on in the snow. Yeah. And then he carries that forward to almost like this spring analogy of like things kind of sprouting again and using that wind, like the wind, the same wind that kind of knocked the leaves off the tree is like the same wind that's like carrying it to a new forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought that was like a full circle, like kind of anytime you can reference like nature and kind of the four seasons and stuff and the poetry of that. I always found that like really interesting. That wordplay in yeah. itself, like now I rise above you looking for the spring, rise above, spring up. Yeah. Like, you know, so that stuff. Spring forward, fall back. Listen. Um, and that, that played so far Same. like on, on kind of even just that wind poetry. So like just when you look at like their pen, even at such a young age, their vocals, their certainly their ability to rap like cadence wise, the, the even the production and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it, they they just did it all from such a young age. And I, I really do love this music video too. I think it's really creative. Um, it all it, it keeps with that innocence and that 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 constant searching for like what's going to be you and it's like whether it's that one world that like you have to burn down or that one world that you kind of take to new heights so to speak um and they even kind of infuse the the moons at the end where it's like the, the 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 blood moon basically like seeming like that dark past and then the new moon when it, and when it comes together it's like this bright shining sun so it's mm-hmm. like you know this this representation of like a new life when you kind of like bleed these paths together and I thought that was together cool. yeah and yeah. i think I think even with K-pop, like, um, I forget how, how, like, we word this. Um, everything in film is Shakespearean. Um, like, there's no new ideas for film. Most yeah. of the time, everything kind of follows, like, the same patterns and everything. Mm-hmm. And music is like that in a lot of ways. And in Korea, it seems like a big emphasis on a lot of, like, idols is, like, youth. And outside of that, when you start transitioning into an adult, mm-hmm. Most of the times, could be 19 turning into 20, and Even just the like song the song by Han, 19, mm-hmm. and everything like that. I know we, it's we another have, banger. We have talked about that up here, but it's all during like that kind of mm-hmm. that kind of pocket. Yeah. So I guess my thing with K-pop and really just music in general is like, how can you kind of take those themes and make people receptive to them themes, or just make people kind of relate to them? Um, and they do a very good job of making making adolescents or making anybody who seemed like maybe they were like an outcast or like. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say not welcomed, Straight um, welcome, yeah. like like strays, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean, yeah. like it's just almost like they find like the, the Oliver Twist kids, yeah, and um, lead you on the right path, and even if you're on the wrong path, just letting you know that mm-hmm. those paths can combine, yeah. kind of like what happens at yeah. the end of and here. One thing I also love too is that they've also expressed, um, maybe not specifically to this song, but like with the collection of songs, like in their early albums, basically like even if this is like the journey of like you know the, like the I Am albums, mm-hmm. like. Um, where it's like, you know, you have these three subsets of albums basically that act as like one cohesive thing. And it's like, even if it doesn't, like they kind of still acknowledge that even though they're going through this, maybe it shines a mirror that you can relate to, but they personally like might not know themselves necessarily. Like that's still a journey to kind of be discovered. So I like that it doesn't ever feel like it's like, you know, like I found the answer. It's, it's just like you're constantly evolving, growing, developing, um, having setbacks, even if you reference, um, because you have moments where it's like it feels like I found myself sort of thing, mm-hmm. but then if you even go back to like lonely, um, lonely street on Maniac, it's like totally I'm still astray, mm-hmm. like I'm still astray. So it's like you have these constant moments of like setback um, as well, and I just think that's so human, so vulnerable, um, and it's it's like you can't help but like be able to relate to that. Um, 
So yeah, I, I love all this stuff. Even the makeup on them and everything, like all these like damaged, bruised kind of looks, like you just like been on this like hellish journey, so to speak. Even outside from like Elevator, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just like they they snap on this. I love the the direction and everything. Even like having like the the Shakespearean or excuse me, not Shakespearean necessarily, but um, like the the Raven or the the Crow. Oh, like me. Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, Edgar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the, like having that foreseeable, like almost like a like a crypt or something. Like there's this death at the, the end death. of it, but it's actually like this new life that you kind of are able to almost like breed from it in a sense. So mm -hmm. I, I think all that is just really poetic, and it is like that almost like a phoenix thing, you know, redemption. But basically, the idea that you gotta like kind of like have that a death of something to be able to rise into something else. Now that's that's yeah. decent, and I think people gotta take that into consideration too. You had mentioned it earlier that like you know, a lot of them are still young men right here. You know what I mean at the time, and these are this is a self-sustaining group. These are people who produce, write their own things. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they can come up with their own choreography if they, they uh, like want to for stuff. Yeah. Um, they come up with their own concepts and everything too. Mm -hmm. So that puts groups. And it's not like a comparison thing, but that just yeah. puts you so far ahead of other people. And you know, I don't knock people for taking reference tracks because some people, some people can take reference tracks and turn them into gold. And, and half the time, people sending in reference tracks mm -hmm. don't. I don't want to say don't sound good, <laughs> but uh, like you know, I, all that being said, I really don't care about none of that stuff. But I'm gonna always respect a writer. No, of course. Um, I'm always respect a writer, and I'm always respect creatives. So, you know, those groups that you can just leave in a room mm -hmm. and they can kind of just, you know, do a whole album with choreography and everything just in that room. Yeah. Those are scary groups, man. And they're literally the survival show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff coming soon. Um, but yeah, yeah, nah, I'm good, bro. This is a good watch. Uh, think okay. peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If, if you're not subscribed, be subscribed, man. Jump on the Patreon. Definitely just got into some stuff over there and Kurt's about to show me something else. Uh, so yes, Dave, we love y'all. We're going to holler at y'all. Take care.